Hello and welcome to the Thursday, October 20th, uh, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier, who is currently attending the CTI Summit in Luxembourg, listened uh, to a talk by Patrice Offred and the founder of Onife, if I pronounce this uh, correctly. Onife is one of the companies performing internet-wide scans for open ports to identify exposed uh, services. These type of scans, uh, Shodan, for example, being another one that does that and is quite famous for it, have happened for uh, quite some time, often for research purposes, but lately, sort of the business model of attack surface detection for organizations has a little bit evolved around this. And there have been a good number of companies that basically have collected the same kind of data. In a diary post today, Xavier is going over some of the ethical issues evolved with these scans, some of the things that uh, these companies should take care of before they sort of just start scanning. I've always been a bit ambivalent about these services, but I do think there is a purpose for them. But the question really is, you know, how many of them do we need? And there is a significant uh, percentage of the scans that we are seeing that are attributable uh, to uh, these uh, companies. So in addition uh, to the consideration Xavier put forward, I would uh, probably add that they also should make some of the data available publicly in return kind of for the cost of the public's network that uh, they are using uh, to perform uh, these scans. This week, uh, the US government started accepting applications for student loan forgiveness via a website, studentaid.gov. As expected, applications do require a number of uh, sensitive personal information like social security numbers and the like. And the FBI today warned, and shouldn't really be a surprise, but scammers are apparently already jumping on the opportunity to trick users into submitting this information to phishing websites and, well, other related scams. As always, uh, be careful and make sure you visit the correct studentaid.gov website. Nice that they at least use a .gov website. That sort of makes it uh, more distinguishable. I did look at a registration sort of for lookalike uh, domain names and uh, haven't really seen much at all. There's sort of only one, two or so uh, data that I could find in our new domain data. Uh, on the other hand, that website has existed for a while. Uh, that domain name, now just part of that website is being used for these applications. Probably another smart move to sort of reduce a little bit the exposure here. SafeBreach uh, published a blog post with details regarding what they call an undetectable PowerShell backdoor. As so often with covert channels, the ability to detect it depends on knowing what to look for. In hindsight, well, most covert channels are easy to detect, so I don't want to be uh, too uh, strict here on the undetectable claim. What makes this particular command and control channel difficult to detect is more or less the fact that it is different from what most people are looking for. According to a safe breach, about 100 victims were targeted by this attack. And imagine that it starts out with a malicious Word document. The Word document does claim to be related to a LinkedIn-based job listing. And then it drops a Visual Basic script that calls itself updater.vbs and sort of tries to disguise itself as an update uh, process. Nothing really too sophisticated here. Now, one of the things that makes the command control channel actually quite detectable is that it just connects directly to an IP address, not a host name. Actually, I was talking about this uh, earlier uh, today that uh, looking for outbound connections to IP addresses that are not related to any DNS responses that you saw uh, certainly is something to look for most normal traffic uh, does first do a DNS lookup before connecting uh, to the IP address. So that's 
one of the more generic ways how you could detect this. It also uses HTTP, does not use HTTPS. However, the payload itself is encrypted. Uses AES uh, for its encryption. The keys uh, should be retrievable from the packet data if I saw this correctly. One thing uh, that sort of helped them actually figure out how many uh, people were infected by this was that the victim ID that you're being assigned appears to be sequential and that allowed SafeBridge to actually sort of impersonate different victims and uh, to see what commands, the particular command control channel was attempting uh, to send them, which then of course also allowed them to exactly figure out how many victims were caught by this particular uh, malware. Like I said, even an undetectable command control channel is detectable once you know what to look for. So uh, take a look at the safe breach report. Uh, they have a couple additional details here to hopefully help with detection. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.